the purpose of this lesson is to show you how you can analyze mathematically one-dimensional collisions using the law of conservation of momentum. To start with, let me give you some tips that I would use uh, as strategies as I navigate through these problems that are sometimes kind of involved, take a number of steps, need to uh, or force you to have a, a pretty solid idea of what's going on before and after a collision. The first tip is um, get in the habit of sketching the situation before and after the collision. It doesn't have to be a real uh, lifelike sketch. Um, you know, if it's a car, you can use a box or a ball, but make sure that um, you sketch the situation uh, as you read it through um, in the problem. Number two, uh, as much as possible, label your sketch with all the variables and information that you have. And number three, but maybe the most important thing is, as you go through your question, make sure that you are constantly uh, ensuring that the sign of your vectors is consistent with the way they're described in the question. So if things are moving to the left, you may want to indicate that that's negative. If they're moving to the south, maybe that's negative as well. But make a distinction between uh, things that are moving in a positive direction and a negative direction. Let's take a look at this question as an example, and I'll try and demonstrate how we use those three steps and the law of conservation of momentum in order to solve for an unknown variable. So in this case, we have a couple of steel balls uh, that are traveling in certain directions with certain velocities before a collision. Um, after the collision, we have a, a new set of variables or the same balls, but they're moving in different directions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the situation the way I understand it. So the first thing I see is going on is I have a 0.25 kilogram ball traveling east at a velocity of 4.5 meters per second. It's going to run into a 0.30 kilogram steel ball traveling west at a velocity of 5 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to um, on my diagram, I'll use the 0.25 kilogram ball as a red ball. So it's moving to the east, so I'm going to draw my red object here. It's going to be moving to the east. I'll say the east is to the right in my picture. So it looks a little something like that. I have another ball, the 0.30 kilogram steel ball. It's moving in the other direction. Um, I'll label as much as I can right now. Uh, this has got a mass equal to 0 0.30 kilograms. The red object has a mass of 0 0.25 kilograms. The speed of the red ball, or velocity, is 4.5 meters per second. The velocity of the blue ball is 5.0 meters per second. And I'm just going to, at this point, make sure that when I, whenever I write a vector quantity like I have here with velocity, I'm going to indicate the direction. So in this case, the 5 meters per second is negative, and the 4.5 meters per second is positive. So I think I've accurately drawn a picture of the initial situation, the before picture, what the two objects are doing before the collision. Let's see if we can do the same thing for the after situation or after the collision. So reading through the question, after the collision, the 0.25 kilogram ball is traveling west at a velocity of two meters per second. So I'm gonna draw my red object, still with its 0.25 kilograms, moving in the opposite direction it initially has at 2.0 meters per second. We have our blue object, uh, which still has its mass of 0 0.30 kilograms. But our problem is to find the velocity of that thing. Not sure if it's going to be going to the right or to the left. I can make a, probably an educated prediction that it may be moving off to the right or off to the, uh, the east. But it really doesn't matter. I'll, I'll draw it that way. But in the end, I'm going to mathematically prove not only how fast it's moving, but which direction as well, using the law of conservation of momentum. 
But at this point, I think I've accurately summarized what the words say in a picture form. I have my before and I have my after situation, before and after the collision, with all the information that will allow me to use the law of conservation momentum to find my unknown. Now, before I move on, I'm just going to do one thing that helps me, and that is I'm going to take my before situation, I'm going to make it a little smaller here, I'm going to slide it off to the right, and I'm going to take my after situation, I'm going to make it a little smaller, and I'm going to put it, sorry, on the, I'm going to put it on the right, and I'm going to have my before situation on the left. Now, what that allows me to do is I'm going to draw a line here, whoops, again, going to draw a line here which will allow me to keep separate what's going on before and after the collision and at some point I'll bring them together but to start with I'm going to take a look independently at what I have for momentums before and after the collision. So let's take a look at the before side. Before I had a red object with a certain amount of momentum. I'm going to find out how much momentum that red object it had by taking its mass and multiplying by its velocity. So in this case, I have a 0.25 kilogram object moving at a rate of 4.5 meters per second. So I have a total 1 decimal 125 units of momentum. Now to save time and through the uh, marvels or mysteries of uh, the beauty of doing this on video, I can quickly just show you my calculation for the momentum of the blue object. turns out that the blue object has 1.5 kilograms times meters per second worth of momentum. Remember, since the blue object is going in the negative direction, it should have a negative momentum, so I've indicated that here. So now I've calculated the momentum of each individual object before the collision. I can actually tell my, or, uh, find out right now what is the total momentum of the objects before the collision. So the total momentum will simply be the total of all momentum. So we have object number one, we'll call it object number two, the red object and the blue object, considering their directions. So object one, 1.125 kilograms times meters per second plus negative. 1.5 kilograms times meters per second. So my total momentum out, or sorry, before the collision is negative 0.375 kilograms times meters per second. So I have uh, pretty much determined all of the information that I can for the before situation. I have each individual um, object's momentum and now I found out the total momentum of both objects before the collision. This is an important number because according to the law of conservation of momentum, that should also be the total momentum after the collision. So we're going to keep that highlighted down here and let's go ahead and see what we know about the, or the after situation. With the after situation, I'm going to do a similar kind of thing. I have enough information to find out the momentum of the red object after the collision. I'm going to use the prime symbol to indicate the after momentum and the after velocity. So 0.25 kilograms multiplied by the velocity of 2 meters per second, only now it's negative. So negative 0 0.50 kilograms times meters per second. On the other hand, for the blue object, the momentum is a little bit of a mystery. We know its mass, but we don't know its final velocity, or V prime. So I can write down that the momentum of the blue object after the collision is 0 0.30 kilograms multiplied by its velocity, which is unknown. So this is an issue. I don't know the momentum of the object, and I don't know its uh, velocity. That's what I'm going to attempt to find out. So as you can see, I've taken all the information, put it in a picture form, taken all the information from the picture now, and I've mathematically determined what was the momentum of each individual object as much as I can before and after. In the case of the before situation, I have the total momentum before, which allows me to know the total momentum after. So let's put it all together now. 
I'm going to write my equation for the law of conservation momentum. We've seen it in words, but in a formula form, it's this. If I took the sum of all the initial momentum, it should equal the sum of the final momentum. In this case, we have two objects before the collision and two objects after the collision. The red object's momentum, we'll call it object one, added to the blue object's momentum before the collision, we'll call it object two, should equal the red object's collision after, or sorry, momentum after the collision plus the blue object's momentum after the collision. I now take each of my values for momentums and I'm going to put it into the equation as much as I can. And this is what it looks like. I had my initial red momentum before the collision, my initial blue momentum before the collision, I have my red momentum after the collision, and my unknown, at this point, my momentum of the blue object after the collision. If I do the math, then my total momentum before the collision, I already figured that out, but it's negative 0 0.375, should equal the red momentum after the collision, negative 0 0.50 kilograms times meters per second, plus the blue momentum after the collision. Rearranging this a little bit, I find out that on this side, momentum two's, or sorry, the momentum of object two after the collision is equal to negative 0.375 plus 0.5, or 0 0.125 kilograms times meters per second. So I'm almost there. I know the momentum of the second object after the collision. I also have an equation for the second object's momentum after the collision. It's its mass times its velocity after the collision. So if this is the momentum of the second object after the collision, positive 0.125 kilograms times meters per second, it has its same mass of 0 0.30 kilograms, then I can solve for its velocity. It's simply 0.125 kilogram meters per second divided by 0 0.30 kilograms. So in the end, V2 prime, the velocity of the second object, 0.125 divided by 0.3, it's 0.417 meters per second in the positive direction, which I remember right, was to the east. And for you significant digit Nazis out there, 0.42 meters per second to the east. So in the end, a lot of calculations, and we'll look at alternative ways to do this, but really, um, if I were to distill it down to what you have to do, it really comes down to this. Number one, uh, sketch your situation. Number two, um, identify all variables on your sketch. So label them on sketch. Number three, and, and we'll see different ways, but at some point you're going to have to uh, apply the law of conservation of momentum. And uh, in this case, I've, I've done it in one process. Um, I'll show you maybe some more, I guess, elegant or uh, different ways at least. And you're going to pick and choose and, and find the best way that suits kind of your style and the way you can organize your problem solving. Um, but the, the ultimately, it really comes down to those three things. Um, sound simple, and all the steps along the way um, are things that you're perfectly equipped to do. Uh, the biggest issue that you're probably going to deal with is keeping yourself organized and this big reminder, keep track of the signs. The directions for all your vector quantities are critically important.